high school grand. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Edge of 17 moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the funniest, most heartwarming, and most relatable moments from this modern teen classic. Number 10, The Date. Oh my God. In spite of her unrelenting awkwardness and a handful of unfortunate encounters, Nadine finally gets the attention of the boy she has a crush on, and he asks her out on a date. But Nick's idea of a date doesn't take them to a fancy restaurant or a movie or even to Petland. He drives them to a parking lot with the intention of hooking up, and is pretty aggressive about it. I, I don't know if I should... You should... No, get off! Get off! Off! Okay. Get off! Ah, teen romance. Though it's not what Nadine expected, she tries to make the most out of the situation until she realizes that it's just not what she wants. What do you mean, what do I want? What do you want? I, I, to talk? To get to know you? Not just do it in the first five seconds? You wrote me a novel about how you were dying to blow me in Petland, you psycho. The moment is representative of the emotional confusion that most teenagers experience. Number 9. Nadine Drunk and Hungover what teenager could possibly resist taking advantage of an empty house when her mom is away for the weekend? But after a fun night of partying with her best friend Krista, Nadine ends up in the bathroom hurling up her good time. She gets suddenly deep talking about how much she hates herself while Krista consoles her. I just hate the way it looks when I talk. I'm gonna chew gum. Don't ever let me chew gum, okay? Don't! The story gets fearlessly profound in an oddly real moment that touches on the internal struggles and extreme emotions that come with being a teenager. We've all been there. Number 8. Nadine Reconciling with Krista and Darian Accidentally walking in on her older brother and her best and only friend hooking up understandably sends Nadine over the edge. We can't completely blame her for feeling hurt by the situation, but she definitely takes things too far when she dumps Krista for refusing to choose between the two of them. You can't, you, you can't have both. It's me or him, pick. After spending the whole movie fighting, Nadine gains some perspective and shares a nice moment with Darian and Krista where they wish each other a nice day. Have, have a good day, both of you. Have a great day. Thank you. It's a short and simple moment, but all that's needed to show that all will eventually be okay. Number 7. Nadine and Krista Meet For Nadine, making friends didn't exactly come naturally, but her awkwardness didn't just start in high school. It's been a lifelong struggle. After having a particularly bad day at school, Nadine lets out her frustrations by bashing the playground fence with her umbrella. My childhood had become a raging dumpster fire, and I couldn't take one more second of this intolerable, unlivable nightmare of a- Excuse me. Then, as Nadine puts it, an angel appeared. What a wonderful way to look back fondly on your best friend. She was dressed like a small elderly gentleman. And her breath smelled of sweet tarts. Krista came along with a caterpillar she was taking care of and said they could be co-moms. The moment is absolutely precious, despite the caterpillar's unfortunate fate, and Nadine's narration of the scene is purely hilarious. I accidentally suffocated him two hours later in my pencil box. Number 6. The Ferris Wheel Hey, excuse me, could you be let off? Dating in high school can be seriously awkward, and that mutual awkwardness can eventually lead to something really special. After bailing on a party, Nadine calls her new friend Irwin to save her night, and the two go on a Ferris Wheel ride together. Unlike other teen movies with unbelievably eloquent teenagers, Nadine and Irwin are both pretty inarticulate. Whoa, what Whoa, are you? What? Oh my god. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what, was that was that bad timing? Because I oh. thought it was good timing because you were on a Ferris wheel oh, and you're wow. upset. Okay. I'm just trying to comfort you. Even though Nadine rebuffs Irwin's kiss attempt, the two end up having a pretty wonderful night together, culminating in Nadine telling Irwin he's like an old man. I just, I see this very kind, very gentle, very wise old man in a convalescent home in a wheelchair. Not exactly the compliment he was hoping for. The moment somehow manages to be pretty swoon-worthy, even if it's also kind of cringy. Number 5. Irwin's Movie Part of what makes this movie an instant teen classic is the effortless balance between comedy and heavy dramatic moments. After some serious drama with Nadine and her family, we finally get a breath of relief with one of the film's lighter scenes that also proves to be one of its best. As promised, Nadine goes to see Irwin's movie in the film festival, which turns out to be subtly about her. Irwin shows Nadine how he feels with this not-so-subtle movie about how Nadine should appreciate him. Too late! Ah, 
It's a moment of realization for Nadine, not just about Erwin, but about herself. Wow, I'm one of those people that thinks everything is about them. This, mm. this is I'm just the messing with you. <sighs> yeah, I'm just messing with you. I set that up. You shithead. Number four, Darian's confession. According to Nadine, Darian's life is perfect. He's her parents' favorite, he's popular, and now he's dating her best friend. I don't give a shit about you. I'm only here for me, and my life is incredible. We can definitely understand why she's upset, and Darian seems to have little to say about how the situation affects his sister. That is, until he picks her up from Mr. Bruner's, and everything that's been unsaid between them finally comes out. No, I love spending another night talking mom off the ledge. I love only applying to schools nearby, because who knows what'll happen in the house if I'm not around to fix it. Darian's confession about what his life is really like leads Nadine to her own confession, and the two see each other in a whole new light. I think some deranged part of me likes thinking I'm the only one with real problems. <laughs> like, that makes me special. Gaining insight into each other's perspectives helps these two siblings see each other in a new way they never have before, and they're both better for it. Number three, the pool scene. You're a big egg. Everybody's said. I hope you like the song, so screw you. You know that cliche scene in every teen movie where the two characters who obviously like each other find themselves in a normal situation that somehow turns sexual? Well, this isn't it. In fact, Nadine calls out the movie cliché and inadvertently messes with Erwin, who, for a moment, thinks she actually wants to have sex. Do you want to have sex right now? Okay. But Erwin ends up being a great sport about the whole thing. Any other teen movie would probably have the characters actually hook up during the scene, but this one is intent on playing against the trope, and instead the two have a completely platonic but equally touching evening in Erwin's pool to a, let's say, interesting soundtrack. Dick head, you're such a dick head. <laughs> and everybody knows it, everyone but you, you're a dick head. Number two, lunch with Mr. Bruner. Everyone has that one special teacher that impacts their life. For Nadine, that's Mr. Bruner. And apparently the feeling is mutual. Guess what? You're my favorite student. Despite his tough love approach, she is his favorite after all, feeling completely lost and embarrassed after sending a humiliating text message to the boy she likes. Nadine has decided to kill herself and goes to tell him. Suicide is never funny, but somehow the dynamic between Haley Steinfeld and Woody Harrelson makes this particular situation hilarious. I have 32 fleeting minutes of happiness per school day during lunch. Their reactions as he reads the text message aloud make for one of the best parts of the movie. So I want to feel you mm. inside me. We can do it in the Petland stockroom. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Just don't be so weird. God, why are you so awkward? God, just have a good time. Just relax, just relax, have a good time. Go talk to people. Can I have this whole punch? Give that to me. I want you to just sit there for the next eight hours and don't touch anything and don't make any noise. Let's go. Number one, text message scene. I like you. I've liked you for months. I think about you every second. I don't know, maybe I even love you. Speaking of the infamous text, embarrassing yourself in front of your crush is a staple of this genre. But kids from 80s teen movies will never understand the absolute horror that comes from sending an online message that can't be taken back, and will live on for eternity. In a desperate attempt to get the attention of the boy she likes, Nadine accidentally sends him an explicit and mortifying message. You sound like a fucking psychopath! Why do they put the send button so close to the delete button? Nadine understandably freaks out. The text itself is hilarious enough, but Haley Steinfeld's manic yet relatable performance as she becomes more and more panicked makes this, hands down, the film's best moment. Oh my god. Oh my god, no way, no, no, no way, no. <laughs> oh my god! Shit. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.